Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to discuss Victoria Martins. Victoria Martins was murdered August 23rd, 2016. The case is far from over and it is got some confusing plot twists in it. There is a fourth person that is involved and this is from the DNA that the police got from the scene. However, no one's talking about who the fourth person is. So let's get started. Before we get started, I wanted to say thank you, Persian Princess, for suggesting this case. It is very gruesome. It's hard to understand the mind of someone who would do such a horrible thing to such a young child. So thanks for suggesting the case. It hasn't had a lot of coverage. It's been done by mainstream media in the state that they're from. But other than that, there's not much. So let's get started. On August 24, 2016, the dead body of 10-year-old Victoria Martins was found in an apartment building in Albuquerque, New Mexico. After responding to a 911 call regarding a domestic dispute, officers discovered Martin's dismembered remains partially wrapped in a burning blanket in her mother's apartment. The victim's mother, 35-year-old Michelle Martins, and her boyfriend, 31-year-old Fabian Gonzalez and Gonzalez's cousin, 31-year-old Jessica Kelly, were arrested at the scene and charged with first-degree murder, child abuse, and resulting in grievous bodily harm or death, kidnapping. Two of the suspects have pleaded not guilty in the state's court. On June 29, 2018, Michelle Martins pled guilty to one count of child abuse resulting in death. The same day, the Albuquerque Police Department announced a fourth unidentified male suspect was being sought in connection to the case based on DNA evidence recovered from the scene. And this is what I mean by the story taking like bizarre twists and turns. The whole time I'm thinking it's those three, uh, they're guilty. But 2018 DNA evidence shows there was someone else there that did the crime. And Fabio was shown not there. I'm not saying he's completely innocent, but however, he was charged with a pretty gruesome crime that he wasn't there for. Over with you, the interrogation that Victoria's mom when she was talking to the police, some of the stuff she said, warning, it's a little disturbing. So like researching this, I come across an older article and I'm just gonna read to you what it says. A 10 year old girl, and this is about Victoria, 10 year old girl who was raped, murdered, and dismembered by her mother's boyfriend was suffering from a sexually transmitted disease at the time of her death. An autopsy has revealed. Okay, so you group that all together and to me, I would put that with Mr. Gonzalez. However, it doesn't read like that, but it's just kind of like grouping it together. Michelle, Victoria's mom, had admitted that she enjoyed watching her daughter get raped by her boyfriend, Fabian Gonzalez, and his cousin, Jessica Kelly. Michelle had admitted to law enforcement that she had sex with Mr. Gonzalez 20 minutes later, forensic reports said the girl had been raped, strangled, stabbed, and dismembered. Michelle Martins had reportedly told investigators she had offered her daughter online to pedophiles who wanted to rape her. The autopsy shows Victoria had no meth in her system, contradicting her mother's claim that she died from an overdose of meth, which she had given her to relax her but she did have. Martins had initially claimed that she and Gonzalez had been attacked by Jessica Kelly. 
Now, Jessica Kelly's not someone new to the justice system. She does have a rape charge against her, so that doesn't look good in Jessica Kelly's defense at all, but uh, Michelle Martins doesn't look good on you either. You leave your child with a convicted rapist. Yeah, so Miss Martins here is uh, basically claiming she had no idea what happened to her daughter because Miss Kelly, Jessica, came into our bedroom and asks me if I believe in God. She kept hitting me, hitting me, hitting me, punching, she said. As she fled the scene, Martins claimed Kelly shouted, Your daughter's dead. That sounds like a legit story. Regardless of what Miss Martin says, that is definitely not what happened. And then she says that Jessica comes home into our bedroom and asks me if I believe in God and she kept hitting me. But during the course of the police interview, her story changed. Huge shocker, right? She then told cops she and Gonzalez had left Victoria alone with Jessica Kelly. Again, the rapist. And the girl had died after taking some meth she found. Miss Martin said that Mr. Gonzalez and Miss Kelly disposed of Victoria's body, which was found dismembered and wrapped in a burning blanket, and they threatened to kill her if she ratted on them. Luckily, the police were on to uh, Miss Martin's here, and they were doubting what she was saying. Uh, they tricked her into believing that Gonzalez was giving up the truth in another room. Ultimately, she added the truth. She said she had sat back and watched Gonzalez and Kelly rape and murder her daughter. Miss Martins did nothing when this was going on and her daughter begged for She also had admitted to watching the pair rape Victoria on at least three occasions in the days before she was killed. And she thinks Gonzalez had been abusing her for a month while she was at work. Hmm. Why would she leave her child with this girl and stay with this boyfriend? She just doesn't sound quite all there. I mean, right? How can someone be that easily manipulated? I don't think so. Another great statement. She told cops she enjoyed watching her daughter be violated and let two other men have sex with her in the six months before the murder. It is not clear if the police have traced those men or whether they have been tested for the STD which Victoria had been infected with. Michelle had admitted to using a dating website, plentyoffish.com, to look for men to rape her daughter. It's hard to even say it. And Victoria was burned in the bathtub of Michelle Martin's apartment. Some of her remains were found in a plastic bag in a hamper in the kitchen. As we've talked about before, investigators sought DNA um, evidence from the suspects, as well as multiple electronic devices, camcorders, they believe that maybe was possibly used in sexual exploitation of a child or children. But this is where the DNA evidence from the fourth unknown suspect came from. Martins is also facing charges of kidnapping, child abuse resulting in death, Gonzalez faced, it, faced those charges as well as child rape. Now we know this came out long time ago, 2016, shortly after Victoria was murdered, that Martins did plead guilty. However, Gonzalez has not pled guilty. He is saying he is not guilty. Jason Odin, whose son was Victoria's half-brother, said through his attorney, she's never been a monster. She got mixed up with the worst kind of people and that contributed to a downward spiral for what we can tell. Again, this was in 2016, but 
after hearing the things that Michelle Martins stated she allowed in her apartment to happen to her child, then she must have put on a different personality for Jason here. I mean, and if all these things that Michelle says are now not true, why would she say such horrible things about herself? Right? Makes you question it. I don't know. Witnesses saw Jessica Kelly carry Victoria Martins to the apartment around 10 p.m. on August 23rd. Later that night, neighbors reported hearing screaming coming from the apartment. Shortly after that, it was approximately around like 4.30 a.m. on the 24th of August, Michelle and Fabian left the apartment and reported to neighbors that Kelly had attacked them. Okay, now we're just gonna get to the meat and the potatoes of the story. After the police had responded to the 911 call at the apartment, they entered the second story apartment building where they saw smoke coming from behind the closed bathroom door. Upon opening the door, the responding officers discovered the dismembered body of Victoria Martins. The officers did find her in a partially burned blanket. She was then pronounced dead at the scene. An odd topsy did reveal she had been sexually assaulted, strangled to death, and then stabbed and dismembered. Her body was then set on fire. Michelle told police officers that she gave her child, Victoria, meth and alcohol to calm her down so that Jessica and Mr. Gonzalez could rape her. Investigators did determine that Victoria died between 7.45 and 8.30 p.m. on August 23rd. All three suspects were arrested and charged with the murder of Victoria. The three suspects were held on a $1 million bond cash only. Martins and Gonzalez and Kelly were arraigned on September 16th, 2016. District Attorney uh, Torres said in a press conference that most of the details regarding the case were simply not true. During the conference, the Albuquerque Police Department announced that fourth uh, unidentified male suspect, which was sought in a relation to the death of Victoria Martins based on unknown DNA evidence recovered from the scene. Okay, here is the timeline from Albuquerque, New Mexico's uh, law enforcement of Victoria the day that she was murdered. At 4.25 p.m., Victoria got off the school bus, went to her apartment, and her mom and Fabian were not there. However, they came home at 5.07 p.m. Around 6.05, Victoria went to the gas station with Fabian, and about 6.15 to 6.20, Victoria and Fabian returned back to the apartment. Now at 6.30, Michelle and Fabian leave to go to Paradise Hills. I'm not familiar with New Mexico, so I don't know where Paradise Hills is. But there was a rumor or speculation that they're trying to find meth this evening. At 7.02 p.m., Michelle and Fabian return back to the apartment again. At 7.05, Victoria is seen alive by the neighbors. 7.06, Michelle and Fabian leave again. 7.38 p.m., Michelle and Fabian are near Rio Bravo Boulevard and Coors Boulevard. 7.59 p.m., Michelle and Fabian are seen near Five Points and Bridge Boulevard. 8.47 p.m., Michelle and Fabian arrive back to the apartment. At 8.48 p.m., eyewitnesses say Victoria's body was seen being carried out of the apartment. The Attorney General Torres said, this proves Martins and Gonzalez were not present when the murder and rape occurred 
at the apartment. Subsequently, Torres announced nine of the charges against Fabian, including second-degree murder and criminal sexual penetration, were dropped. Gonzalez still faces a series of charges, including child abuse resulting in death and tampering with evidence. Michelle is believed to have falsely confessed to actively participating in the murder. The plea bargain guaranteed Martins will face 12 to 15 years in prison. However, it is possible she could have her sentence cut in half since the charges are not classified as a serious violent offense. Don't understand our laws in this country. Michelle Martins will be sentenced after the conclusion of Gonzalez and Kelly's trials. August 4th, 2017, the Albuquerque Journal reported that an investigation by the Civilian Police Oversight Agency, COP, CPOA found that a spokesperson from the Albuquerque Police Department, quote unquote, did a lie. Wow. To the newspaper about the police department's respond to CYFD, basically your children and family services in New Mexico. There was a referral concerning Victoria Martins prior to her death. A shocker. In 2016 of December 2016, a sergeant and a commander of the crimes against children unit, <clears throat> children's unit told police command staff, including chief of police, Gordon Eden, and a department spokesperson that the Albuquerque police had received referrals from CYFD about Martins. Okay, this is where some more confusion comes in, and it also has to do with law enforcement lying. Late January 2017, two police spokespersons told the Albuquerque Journal, which is the newspaper I'm assuming there in their town, the officers did investigate the referrals and stated that interviews with Victoria and her mother had been conducted. However, this was revealed by investigation to be false. In July 2017, the CPOA investigations discovered that one of the police spokespersons held correct information about the case, but fabricated details in the January statements given to Albuquerque Journal. Albuquerque's Citizen Police Oversight Agency voted for the officer since removed from spokesperson duties to be suspended for two weeks. Oh, what a punishment. However, Eden modified this to a one-day suspension, go figure, and argued that there was no evidence the officer intentionally lied. Hmm. I don't know if I believe that. Due to the disagreement, the case will next be reviewed by an independent monitor overseeing the Albuquerque Police Department's reform. August 2017, Victoria Martin's maternal grandparents, Michelle's parents, filed a wrongful death lawsuit against City of Albuquerque and some of its police officers. The lawsuit alleged that their failure to investigate a report that one of Michelle Martin's boyfriends tried to kiss Victoria was negligent and that leads to this murder. The lawsuit said the city of Albuquerque had, in effect, policies, practices, and customs that condone and foster the unlawful conduct of the individual's defendants and were a direct and proximate cause of Victoria's murder. The lawsuit seeks policy changes and compensation for the Martins family. My question would be, where are the grandparents in this? How can they put the blame onto others and not take a little responsibility themselves? So I'm a little raw with that. That's my own opinion. However, it is what it is. I don't know if the suit has been done yet, if it's completed the trials for all three of the 
perpetrators are going to be after the first of the year, January 2020, or even a couple months after, due to them finding the fourth person's DNA and the speculation around why Kelly, Jessica Kelly, and uh, Fabian Gonzalez and Michelle Martins are not coming clean on the fourth person is they all supposedly have gang ties there in New Mexico and I guess they would rather spend life in prison than to narc someone out and end up being killed on the streets later but regardless this crime was tragic horrible and brutal the details of Victoria being dismembered was a lot. I will just leave it at that. Um, you can look it up and see for yourselves if you would like. But, I don't know, just a sad, sad story. So, that's all I have, alright? Like, subscribe, share, or don't. I'll see you guys.